this week we'll start programming in R. Uh, this week and next week we'll look at an introduction to R and R Studio. Make sure that you have R and R Studio installed, and these are the most recent versions. If you don't, pause the video, install them, and then come back. R is the programming language. It's a statistics and data analysis environment, whereas our studio is what's known as an integrated development environment. It's similar to a, a, a GUE, a graphical user interface. It's a lot easier to use than R on its own. This is what a typical session in R looks in R Studio looks like when you first open it up. And if R Studio sees R installed, you'll receive this message in the console screen. So this is the most recent version, and it's important that you have the most recent R version because there are important updates when new versions come out. And sometimes you'll receive an error message and it's not clear why and it's, it's because there's some incompatibility, incompatibility between the version you have and a package that you're using. All right, so this is the console window. This is where uh, the code will run. This is um, Oh, a text, our text editor, this is where we can trial and error text, where we can make notes about what uh, the code is doing or what, what the code does, uh, any problems that we need to work out. This pane is called the environment pane. It's useful because it'll show you the objects that you have in your global environment as well as the history of commands. Um, so it's, it, you can import from here from a CSV file, uh, as well as save. This is our kind of project management pane. So you, we can see a list of our files. This is where we'll look at the plots, as well as what packages are installed and um, we can act, we can call those packages or libraries here and we'll see how, how to do it uh, in a more automated way in the text editor. To begin, um, if you don't have your panes like this, I mean, you can, there is an option to uh, show the different, uh, different layouts. You can explore those. And for the purpose of the video, I am going to minimize these screens in case you need to work, in, in case you need to split your screen. That way you can see, get maximum screen real estate. Ideally, you would be working on two separate screens, one with your RStudio open and the other with the YouTube video. This way you can pause easily and compare code. And if I'm going too fast, you can go back. And um, it's, it's a little bit easier than splitting your screen, but I recognize that you may not have two screens to be able to do that. So I've made my font really large um, to make it easier to see visually. And all the notes, all the coding notes and the lecture notes are available on our Canvas site. So let's start by writing some code. Let's start with basic expressions. We can write code directly in the interpreter, or the console. In this example, we'll be working with kangaroo rat bait, probably from the um, portal project in Portal, Arizona. Uh, let's say we have a rat weight of 50 grams and we want to convert that to pounds. 
So, you know, you, you can use uh, R as a calculator, right? We could say, okay, give me 50 grams divided by a thousand to convert it to kilograms. And I know that if for one kilogram, it's 2.2 pounds. So we can use R as a calculator. Right? But most of the time you're going to use R to an R studio to automate um, automate a, a function or a script. So to do that, we want to write and save our code in this text editor or script. And if you don't have this open or if you accidentally pressed one of these buttons, I guess it would be this one. And you can toggle these icons, or if you accidentally close it, you select this, uh, you know, plus green plus icon for new R script. In a few weeks, we'll learn how to we'll, how to do everything in R Markdown. All right, so we have our new R script. And the great thing is that we can create notes in our R script. So convert kangaroo rat weight from grams to pounds. And you notice if I use this hashtag, uh, it changes the color of the code. So let's compare this to a line with no hashtag. So we'll repeat our calculator steps, 50 divided by 1,000 times 2.2 .2 pounds to get 50 grams into pounds. All right, so the color may be different on in your R Studio, in mine, right? The commented codes don't run, right? Um, but the lines of code without those hashtags. That's the actual code. We can run from the text editor by um, putting the cursor on the line you want to run. And it'll execute, it'll run that line. Uh, there's also sh keyboard shortcuts. So on my computer, I think it's control shift Enter. Control Shift Enter is run everything. Control Enter is to run a single line. And we, the value of using this script or text editor is that you can save something and share it with a collaborator and they'll be able to see and understand when you have your code commented like this, what the code does. So I'm going to create a, navigate to our files, and I'm going to create a new folder for this course. Um, and in that folder, I'm going to create a new folder for our scripts. And this is where I'll save all of our scripts for the, the course. And I want to, I'm going to set our script folder as the, I'm going to set our data science course as the working directory. And then I'm going to save our script in our scripts folder. And this might be intro to our part one. Let's continue to variables. A variable or an object is a name that has a value associated with it. And we create variables by using um, an assignment operator, 
which is the uh, less than and minus together, but there's a keyboard shortcut. On my computer, it's Control Shift. It's it's Alt M. No, Control Shift M. Nope. It is Alt minus. Yeah, Alt minus. So we're telling our okay, our create this object or variable. I use them interchangeably. Create this variable called weight underscore g and in that variable store the value of 50. You can also assign variables a value using the equal sign, but what people don't like about this notation is that in other parts of the code, we'll see how equal sign can have a different meaning. And visually, it looks a, um, a little nicer to use the assignment. So I've written code, but I haven't actually run anything. To do that, I need to you know, select run or hit control enter. And that value won't change unless you assign a new value to it directly. Right, I can type out, uh, hey R, what's the value of Weichi? And it stores that value. We can see that in our environment. So I can do um, mathematical operations on that value, just like I would using a numerical value. And I'm gonna, Control enter. And to prove yourself that that value doesn't change when you do operations like that, you can type in the variable name and run it again. And the variable value hasn't changed. However, if we change the value of weight g, right? Let's say, okay, our, for this variable called weight g, now store the value, uh, now store a new value. And I'm using control enter to run that line of code. And now, my R understands that variable to be the new value. So it's important to, to know that R overwrites here, any existing variable with the same name. Sometimes that can lead to uh, mistakes in your coding or errors and you don't know why and it's because you're overwriting something. All right, so far we haven't used much of the comments, but it's good practice to comment your code well. And for example, here we could say something like uh, create a variable for weight and store a value. And here we could write something like do some math on the newly created variable. The comments are to help you remember what the code is doing or to help explain to other people what the code is doing. If you're passing your script along to an undergraduate student, for example, or to a collaborator or to your future self, it helps explain in a concise way what the following code does. All right. Um, now let's look at some examples of using, using R as a calculator. And this mimics your assignment for the week. So I'll start you off 
with the first few questions and then it, you can continue on, on your own. Remember that we can use R as a calculator, but because of this, let's do 4.5 minus three times two, because um, R can be used as a calculator, it follows the same rules um, that you would find in, in math, right? So it, it adheres to the order of operators in math. Those are the same in R. So if we 1.2 minus 10, I'm gonna run using the icon. I'm going to calculate what 4.5 minus three times two is using the keyboard shortcut of control enter. Right, so we can see that the the answer is negative 1.5, and that's because it's calculating three times two first before it does the subtraction. So the exercise related to this segment is asking you to turn this set of a uh, set of expressions into a program that you can save by using an R script. So it's basically asking you to continue this portion here in an R script. And you'll want to print out all of your, uh, your results uh, when you submit your, your answers. So let's continue on to functions. A function is a more complicated expression. It's a command that returns a value and it hides the details of how that value is determined. It's useful when we don't want to know how the numbers are rounded or how the numbers are calculated. Right? This is useful if you're calculating uh, relative growth rate for trees based on the diameters. You don't want to know all the, you know, the formula you want to provide, the diameter, the height, maybe wood density, um, and, and you want to R to spit out that final value. R has a lot of built-in functions like uh, square root. And you see when I partially fill in um, a variable, it, R will recognize it and provide this kind of drop-down selection. And then I can use tab to auto-complete. This reduces the amount of typing involved, and because of that, it reduces the amount of typing errors. So you can use your arrow keys to scroll down or up. And the first thing that was highlighted, in fact, I'll do this all over again. Wait, so the first thing that is highlighted is the variable that we created. And I want to tab to autocomplete and I want to control enter to run that line. So this calculates the square root of this variable and without having to know how it's actually doing that. So square root is the name of the function. And if you hover your cursor over the function name, it'll give you kind of what are the arguments that it expects. So in this case, it expects a value, some value, x value. In this case, we gave it a value of uh, the variable that's stored in the variable. Another function that we'll use quite a lot is print. So we can print, again, I'm going to hover my cursor over and we see that it takes, uh, it expects the first argument to be whatever you want to print. And then it has this dot, dot, dot. Those are other arguments that you might want to, to use. So let me fill this in, wait. 
programs. Control enter to run. So it prints out whatever is in that um, value. And it lets us explicitly print things out. And uh, when we functions, right where we've seen an example of two functions that take only a single value, but functions can also take multiple arguments. Round, for example, takes uh, two arguments. The first is the thing that you want to round, and the second is how many digits you want to round to. And you know, typing this out and hovering over it can show those arguments, but you can also always look things up using the question mark followed by the function. And you can see, um, scroll down, you can see the usage and the arguments. So it takes a numeric vector and the integer indicating the number of decimal places. So this help is pretty useful for looking at what arguments are expected. And also, if you scroll out all the way to the bottom, you see some of the examples. And sometimes I copy and paste this into the console to see some worked examples for more complex functions. So you can work through those if you like. You can also store the output of a function by assigning it to a variable. So let's create a new variable called weight rounded. And I'm going to use the alt minus keyboard shortcut. I'm going to call that function round. And I know it expects two arguments, the thing I want to round and then the number of digits. So I want to round weight in grams, and I want it to round by one digit. And I'm going to delete this, clean up my code a little bit. And I'm going to run. And now that value is stored in my environment. So I could print, and I'm going to even like, copy-paste to avoid typing. And so that value is stored. And it's not different because I just noticed we don't have the, it, it was a whole number. If you don't save the output of a function, then there's no way to access it later on. So I'm going to copy this function copy paste copy paste and run this line of code but because i didn't save this into a variable there's no way for me to return to this value and it's common to forget this when dealing with variables and expects the variable to have changed. So let's see an example of this. Let's say I want to create the mass in uh, kilograms. Let's say inside of this variable, I want to store the value of 5.163. I'm gonna run, run that code. And I want to round mass that variable to two digits. So we see it's been round to 0 0.52, but we didn't store it as anything. So if we call our variable, it's still the four digit value. If we wanted to store the, the result of this function, we'd have to 
create a new variable or overwrite the existing variable. In this case, let's create a new variable called mass kg round and inside that store this rounded variable. All right, so we've created a few variables, seen the basic functionality of R, and all values have types. That's the third thing that we'll learn in this um, segment. We'll learn about the different types of values. So if we, I'm going to call in explore value types. And we can use the built-in function called str for structure to display the internal structure of an R object or a variable that we created. So we can look at, let's look at mass kg control. And when we see it's displayed num for a numeric. In the environment, you can also see that displayed here as well. Okay, so in the exercise on uh, basic variables, the right, you're being asked to create a variable that stores body mass in pounds and assign it a value, a certain value, and then convert this value to kilograms. So it would look very similar to uh, some of these initial code where we're creating a variable, storing a value inside that variable, and then doing other functions on that variable to convert it to different units. So in this example, if we wanted to convert kilograms to grams, um, we would set the codes to do something like this, where we're storing the value, and then we're creating a new variable to store that value multiplied by 1,000 to convert it to grams. And then we can print out the value of this new variable by typing it, or if you want to be thorough, you can call the, the function print to print out the value of this variable. Did you notice that when I began typing with an open parenthesis, this X icon appeared, and that these are useful flags to help you do your accounting with your open parentheses and open brackets, and it'll help you identify potential typing typos. All right, a quick overview of variables, how to create them and store values inside of them, how to do basic math on these variables, how to use R as a calculator, and we talked about built-in functions. Later in the semester, we'll build our own functions and do more complex exercises. You're getting your feet wet in R, so now it's your turn. Complete the rest of the exercises on your own and check into our discussion boards for the week.